This episode of Hello PhD is sponsored by Promega and listeners like you. Thanks for your support. I could almost say I spent as much time researching the rice cooker as I did researching the, the lab that I joined. What really I'm asking for are readings because that's how it's going to be helpful to the next generation of grad students. Welcome to Hello PhD, a podcast for scientists and the people who love them. This week, we learn about the traits that make a great research advisor and a website where you can get the inside scoop. Stay with us. And we're back. This is Hello PhD, episode 118. I'm Joshua Hall. I'm Daniel Arneman. And we'll discuss the human side of science and life in the lab. Busy summer, Josh. Oh, you jumped in front of me there, man. I, I, we got stuff to do. We got We're a busy. lot to do. It's an action-packed show tonight. I feel like people need to know that you are living the science dream. You had, <laughs> Is that what it's called? Yeah, you had a sing. I, I don't know if it was a single week or a two-week period where you not only had grants due, but you had to do study section in some other city. No, that is true. Within one week, I submitted a grant, and I served on NIH study section. That's what everybody dreams about. You know, Dan, we should... I was thinking... Uh, I took the train up to D.C. This was my first um, sort of train experience, really. And it uh, worked? You it got there? Yeah, it was neat. It was a fun way to travel. Just took 12 hours. I mean, it's like riding in first class on an airplane, but it takes six hours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the time thing I was thinking about with all that time that I had <laughs> to myself was we should do an episode on how study section works, on how grant review panels work behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, it is a total mystery to me. I know that there's... A, big stacks of paper. There's a lot of trees killed for this process. Well, that's true. I did a lot of printing. I'm not a printing guy, but I did a lot of printing. But anyway, Dan, tonight we have a really interesting beer before us. And I think, Dan, this is from a state we have not previously covered with our beer samplings. Unknowable, Josh. Soon to be knowable. We'll get to it. What's the beer? Okay, well, we are drinking tonight the Jury Panel Jalapeno Pineapple Ale. And this is from Legal Remedy Brewing Company from Rock Hill, South Carolina, our neighbors to the south. And your assertion is we have not had a South Carolina beer yet. I mean, I haven't memorized all 117 beers we've had previous to tonight, but I don't recall a South Carolina beer. Okay, well, I have actually made progress. We took took a week. uh, You were away. I spent some time starting our beer map. And I have to say, it is a labor of love. It's going to take a little while to go through the episodes and recall where the breweries were from the beers that we sampled. But uh, it is, it's starting to grow, and we are really all over the world already. And I'm only through episode maybe 15 or so. So I got <laughs> just 100 to go. Yeah, I was looking on our website. I don't see this functionality, this beer map yet. It'll When's be it? up before this post. Oh, it is. So it's going to be on there. Before this post, it'll be on the website. Yeah. And you're at 15. There's 113. I got a little, three left. I got a little stuck on episode 10 when oh. we made whiskey sours. Oh, yeah. What but I was, for some reason, I re-listened to the episode, and I was very coy about what kind of whiskey we had. So I, don't, I can't put that one on the map because I don't know what kind of bottom shelf whiskey I served. It was us. probably Maker's. Oh, this is at your house, though. It was my house, wasn't. yeah. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Costco. Anyways, how do you like this beer, Josh? Uh, you know, this beer... This beer's growing on me. So we actually did the interview that you're about to hear just a few minutes ago. So I've been sipping on this one for a little while. I got to admit, Dan, the first taste I had, the overwhelming flavor that I got was fire and char. Yeah, it has a it has a jalapeno flavor. I don't get capsaicin. There's no heat in it. But yeah, but I guess what I mean is not not fire like uh, I mean like roasty like roast. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, and so anyway, Dan. Just now, as we were looking up notes uh, and researching this beer, I know why, Dan. So this is a jalapeno pineapple ale, so certainly pureed pineapples are in the mix. But this was actually brewed with roasted jalapenos. And they actually say, it looks like on the website, this beer is not spicy nor sweet. The other thing I expected was sweet when they said pineapple. I expected it to be a little bit maltier, a little bit sweeter, and it's not that. It's, It's a savory flavor. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if I'm getting much pineapple flavor. I mean, absolutely what you mentioned, roasted jalapeno flavor is there without the heat, but I could not say that I pick out any pineapple flavor. Yeah, a little bit vegetal, 
wouldn't call it pineapple-y, wouldn't call it fruity. But I like jalapeno flavor. No, it's great. Yeah. It's great. It reminds me of other beers I've sampled that have different kinds of peppers in them. So if you like the flavor of a habanero IPA or a habanero beer, but you don't want the burn down the back of your throat, this might be a good one to try. But if you don't like savory pepper flavor, you would Probably not, like not a good one. No, no. no. If you're a cider drinker, if, don't if, try it. If you are attracted to this beer because of the word jalapeno, you will like it. But if you're attracted to this beer because of the word pineapple, you maybe should search elsewhere. Not a good idea. All right, Dan. Well, what is a good idea is checking out our friends at Promega. Sure is, Josh. Um, If you have a technique that is giving you problems, or maybe you have an undergrad you're mentoring, why not visit the Student Resource Center from Promega? They have resources on all kinds of cellular and molecular biology techniques, including cell culture, reporter assays, all types of PCR, cloning, even sections on job applications and interviews, which are exciting things to do if you're near the end of your graduate school training. Um, just go to promega.com slash hello PhD, and you will find all the resources that we mentioned here on that page. And Dan, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag. We are actually going to be visiting our friends at Promega uh, we're going to be going to Madison, Wisconsin in early September. We'll, we'll share some more details about that visit as they come available. But if you're a listener in the Madison, Wisconsin area, maybe we can catch up with you. All right, Dan, why don't we jump right into our topic of the week? Dan, what would you say is the factor that has the biggest impact on your experience in grad school? Um, it has to be your PI, right? Yeah, I would say that. It has to be that that relationship, the, the person who helps guide your research, that helps train you as a scientist. Uh, we've talked at length about how it can be a wonderful experience and it can totally destroy your love of science if it goes wrong. Oh, it's critical. How much, what did you factor when you chose your PI? For grad school, I did. You know, you you do the interviews um, when you're visiting on that first weekend, and that's how I actually met um, the person that I ended up working in the lab during the interview. During the interview process, and we just got along so well, and it was such a great cordial relationship. The science seemed exciting, the way that it was described, um, and then I rotated there. It went great, and I ended up joining the lab. And through that process, it turned out to be not as simple as, hey, we get along. But yeah, that was how I, that's how I met that person and how we basically formed that mentorship relationship. How about you? Uh, similar. I actually had not met my PI before I did my, had my first meeting asking about rotations. But So yeah. you didn't meet on interview weekend? Or no, like actually, the, the lab I ended up in, I did not meet that PI on interview weekend. Although... You know, I knew the research was sort of in line with what I wanted to do, and he generally seemed like a nice guy. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I did the rotation and felt like the lab environment felt comfortable, and he seemed relatively supportive during the time I was in the lab. And so I've kind of weighed that with the the science that I thought I was going to be doing and sort of went with my gut, I guess I would say. Yeah, I would say, as the, anything. say the same thing. And we have we have advised people on this show to maybe interview previous students or interview current students or take them outside of the lab so you can kind of get the real story on what are the functions and dysfunctions in this lab environment. But what we're going to do today is talk to some students who have started a website, the 21st century version of Going With Your Gut, uh, where you can actually rate PIs and find out what those ratings look like and, and how you can understand the really complex relationship that mentorship represents. You know, Dan, I bought a rice cooker last week. Non sequitur. No, this this is related. This oh, is sequitur. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I'm, I'm with you. And, and it occurred to me, Dan, when I buy, I would say when I buy anything that costs more than $15, I read reviews. I am addicted Absolutely. to reading reviews. Do you read reviews on oh, things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So something as consequential as choosing your advisor, seems like you'd want to get some feedback. I bet you don't spend eight to 10 hours a day, six days a week with your rice cooker, do you, Josh? I don't, but you know what? I bet your I rice can, cooker isn't <laughs> determining your future I careers prospects, say Josh. I spent as much time researching the rice cooker as I did researching the, the lab that I joined. Well, let's school. find out a better way. Okay. Gadareth and Paula, welcome to Hello PhD. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 
Gadara, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us um, a little bit about yourself, basically where you are in this graduate training process? Sure. My name is Gadareth Higgs. I'm actually from the Bahamas, and I am in my ending my second year of grad school at Yale in the Molecular Cellular Developmental Biology program. And I am studying particularly RNAs. I'm looking to find new types of structured non-coding RNAs known as riboswitches in the breaker lab. Awesome. And how about you, Paula? Thank you so much for having us on the show. I love this podcast ever since I heard about it. So thank you. We're excited to have you. So I'm a rising second year. So I just finished my first year in the MCGD track here at Yale. Now joined the Department of Cell Biology in a lab that studies the cytoskeleton in C. elegans, which is quite interesting. Um, But I hail from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, born and raised and just moved to Connecticut a year ago. (laughs) So we're here today to talk about mentorship and the work that you two are doing to improve it. But if you can take us through why mentorship got under your radar and why it's so important to you. For me, coming in as an undergrad, I had various different types of mentorship styles during my undergrad research training and then being a mentor myself throughout different programs at the Arecibo Observatory and then at the UPR campus in Rio Piedras. Uh, I kind of figured out that it's important to have valuable mentorship relationships as they can impact uh, your development as a scientist as well as your development as an individual um, and honing specific skills that will benefit you later on. And coming into grad school and in the process of interviewing for different graduate programs, I met Kadarth and he had this great initiative called Grad PI, which essentially is a website that provides you information of different faculty members that you can learn more of them and how people view them as mentors. And I'm sure Gadarth will go into more details about exactly what we measure. But essentially, once you go into grad school, you have this mentality of you're going to pursue research that you're very passionate about. And that's essentially one of the major components in grad school. But you also want to find a good advisor that you can relate to in a professional, academic, as well as individual developmental level, um, because you want someone at the end of the day to support you. And I remember um, that this tool was very useful during the time that I was looking into people that I would rotate in during my first year. As for me, mentorship is very important and very keen on the development of the individual itself, as well as preparing them for whatever career they want to pursue. It's so true what you say that a good mentor can push you beyond even what you think your own abilities are. And at the same time, a bad mentor or a bad advisor, we'll say, can crush any love you had of the field you were studying. So um, I agree. It, I, it is absolutely, absolutely important. And we're going to talk about grad PI, which, which for people who may not be familiar is... Would you describe it as, as sort of like rate my professor, but at the, the grad school grad, level? Grad school level, absolutely. Okay. That's, a, that's a fair assessment, except for a few, besides being for grad school, I'll go few, through the few differences. Yeah, yeah. Hold, hold on to that for a second, because I think I want to spend some time there. I want to hear, Gadareth, how you came to uh, create that website. Sure, yeah. So... Unlike Paula, who proactively sought out mentorship when she came to grad school, uh, my my realization that mentorship was important was more of a reactive process for me. I came to grad school and I thought, hey, we got grades, we got into Yale. That means that you know all all is well, smooth um, sailing. Yeah, I, yeah. We just I just assumed we would have good mentors and everything would be fine. Whatever we needed help with we could reach out and, and do that. Um, however, that was not the case. I was then caught, it, it, I, was, I was then stuck in the deep end without, you know, a, pa- a paddle. And so I ended up having to switch labs. By the time I switched, I was actually into my third year. And I had, I, to add a little bit more detail to it, I had left on a, I was on a leave, an academic leave. And so during this time, I had to eventually, I had to find a new lab. And I was into my third year uh, since I had started. At, at this point, at least I had gotten my master's. Um, this was in bioinformatics. Um, but 
I was put into a smaller lab, which is not necessarily a problem, but the PI that I worked with was not big on mentorship. I later on found out that he had even had another student in his lab who had had an unsuccessful attempt at the qualifying exam. Un- unfortunately, I didn't find this out until my own unsuccessful attempt, but I realized why. In my attempt, I did everything that I could in order to pass this exam. This takes, generally, uh, you're allotted at least five weeks for something like this, up to maybe about two months to really prepare for this. Uh, and, and usually, if your PI is really supportive, they give you a little bit of time off from lab, particularly in the last few weeks, at least to make sure that you have everything down packed. Of course, I I did not have that opportunity. And his advice to me was do well. Um, You have a lot of people to persuade, is what he said, persuade or influence. And I thought to myself, wow, this is just the sort of support I need right before the biggest exam of my life. And so, uh, as you could imagine, the exam did not go well. I, I was told by the committee that I can retake the exam if the PI would stay as head of the committee. But sure enough, the PI would not even stay as head of the committee or allow me to retake the the exam. So so I was out of grad school and this is where grad PI comes into play. A friend of mine told me about this software development program and I got involved uh, in which I learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And for my final project, I decided, hey, I know a good final project. I'll I'll make a site whereby grad students can rate advisors. And so I, I first checked to see if others were around and I didn't um, note any that were, were fitting the criteria that I would like to, in terms of having open access, being freely accessible by grad students, um, being able to rate. And so I said, okay, I'll go ahead and do this. And that's where Grad PI was born. You, you had these experiences. And so from that process, you said, okay, well, we need some sort of rating system, some way of knowing in advance. And it sounds like this is what Paula was saying. I want to know before I get there what exactly. to expect. But absolutely. But this is all very fuzzy. How do you know if somebody is going to be a good mentor? Is there any rigorous way of, of measuring it or having a, a sense of who's good? Or is it just, I like this person? Submit. <laughs> so the things that I came up with, uh, and I call them the smart metric or the smart evaluation for PIs, um, they involve the following. And this is how grad PI users can rate PIs. S stands for standing, which is their reputation, which is very important in science and in life. Uh, M stands for mentorship, which is personally my favorite of the all of the five metrics. A stands for autonomy, and that is a rating based on how well the PI gives you the autonomy you need, whether that's whether it's a lot or it's a little. R stands for resources because we all need money. And T stands for tact, which kind of is more or less a personality score or whether or not that you like the PI, the PI likes you, he or she is congenial, that sort of thing. So this is these are five metrics and you score these on a one to 10 scale or five scale. How does it work? So the five metrics are on a on a one to five scale and you then are once you rate, you can rate them individually on each of the metrics and there's an overall score that's assessed because uh, some degree of all of these are important. Um, but there's also the ability to look through PIs that have certain ratings in a particular uh, field that is a little bit more uh, something that you're more concerned about. What you're describing is using these five different factors, you can, you can get a lens on how each of these people that you interacted with exactly. were. And yeah. And maybe could notice the red flags before you committed your entire education to one person. Exactly. Um, and, and so I, I'll, I'll tell you the ending of the story. Well, that's, that's how grad PI came about. But I'll tell you the end of the story because you asked, how, how am I still in grad school? Um, so I reached out to a few friends who um, gave me some advice in terms of um, good mentors doing high-impact research at Yale um, with, with resources. And I reached out to one of them. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm currently in the Breaker lab. I reached out to Ronald Breaker. And he um, is HHMI-funded, uh, just, just an all-around decent guy as well. 
And I had a meeting with him and I, where I explained, you know, I, I have bioinformatics expertise. I want to know if I can help you in your lab. Uh, it just so happened that one of their leading postdocs and who, be, who had become a research scientist in the lab was leaving and he was like the king of bioinformatics in the lab. So I would help to fill in a little bit of that void. I hit the ground really running um, because I had already identified, I, I had already identified a good mentor. I had good support. I had already done some research as a postgraduate associate. Um, it was, I hit the ground running so fast that I qualified within my first year. So a totally different outcome based on exactly. that experience. Okay. Exactly. And that's, that's just one of the, the many, I would say milestones that I've had along the way in terms of, uh, I've won a poster prize. I've also had the opportunity of analyzing a lot of bacterial genomes for the ribosomes, which is at this point I've analyzed at about 30 personally. The total uh, lab has analyzed about 64, I think. I, I, and I, I say this to say, not to boast or to brag about what I'm doing now, but more or less to show you the difference. This is the same person, same sort of motivation, same sort of discipline, and it's just applied with, with a better environment. It's it's make or break. It really is, and and I think that's what Paula was saying. So so Paula, did you you came in and you immediately had access to the ratings on Grad PI? Is that how that worked? So yeah, uh, one of the great things about Grad PI is that you can only register with your institutional email. So no faculty members themselves or advisors can kind of access the information that you're redacting or if you're providing some type of uh, scoring on their I was going to say there were not very many there were not many grad students in my lab it would have been really obvious which one I was (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly yeah (laughs) um so it offers a certain kind of anonymity and uh environment where you can kind of provide your input on whether it's a good environment or a or a negative environment for your growth. Everyone has different kinds of mentorship preferences, which I think is a good thing that Grad PI kind of exists because it provides you a sense of kind of the spectrum of different kinds of mentorship. Because as you can also receive a rating, you can provide some type of comment and feedback on each of these different categories and kind of see on why... For you, it's important to have autonomy. Um, Then maybe someone with a low autonomy score is not good for you. But if you don't care about that particular measure, then it's not going to affect your overall run. So it kind of gives you a sense of where you would be or where you would thrive as an individual in grad school. Um, And I think, yes, it's a great platform. And the fact that faculty cannot access the feedback from students is also a good tool just because you feel more comfortable opening up. I personally have been blessed with good mentors, <laughs> so I cannot ne- necessarily say that all of my feedbacks are not on the negative side. They're all very positive, and I tend to like rate a lot and write in very positive comments, but I'm very thorough. And I think not only saying, oh, he was a great or she was a great PI, I think it's important to add information of why do you think they're good in mentorship or how specifically did they mentor you and train you to be successful in X or Y and provide examples when you're providing kind of an input if the the listeners and your audience decide to provide um, input into grad PI, which I think would be very helpful for people at their institutions to kind of get a sense of the faculty that they would pursue graduate studies in just to provide examples on each of these smart evaluation metrics to help navigate what your preference are and what you think you would thrive. Yeah, I have a few, I have a few detailed sort of specific questions. So, so how long has Grad PI been in existence now? The domain was purchased at the end of 2016, but the first PI got put on the site at the beginning of 2017, somewhere around January, February of 2017. Okay, so for yeah. two, two and a half years now. Two and a half, yes, correct. So, so how many ratings are on there at this point? Uh, so at this point, there are 191 ratings. When I last checked, there are 900 users, and there are also about uh, over 3,000 advisors. So what this means is that there are a lot of advisors on there who don't have ratings. 
And so, so if you are listening to this podcast right now, and are you a, you're a grad student or you've had experience with uh, some a PI, whether you're an undergrad or a postdoc, uh, I would encourage you to sign on to the site. It's free. Uh, and to rate the PIs that you, they may either already be on the site or you can add them through a very quick process. It, it takes less than, it takes less than two to three minutes to add and another three minutes to actually rate. So, so yeah, as, so as, as Dan alluded to, uh, you know, in grad school, most labs are fairly small, the number of trainees. It and depends. I, know, I think it depends. Sure, you sure. could probably have anonymity in some of the larger but, labs. But, but you had mentioned that the advisors themselves are not able to, to access the site Absolutely. or the ratings. Yeah. How, how do you ensure that, that that doesn't happen? Yeah, so how we do that is we have anybody who accesses the site has to give us, in order to access the site, you have to give us your academic email. And anytime a PI is put on the site, their academic email is put on the site as well. Now, sure, this is not fully foolproof because different PIs may have different academic emails. And the way we do this is that we also cross-check the first name and the last name of the PI and the first name and the last name of people who are com- trying to come on as, as, as users. So those are two ways. In addition to this, we have, um, Paula already mentioned that, as, as you're talking about now, the PIs cannot log in. There are other ways that we ensure privacy and anonymity, and this just differentiates us from Rate My Professor. Comments are optional, and so you don't, if you don't want to use your speaking voice or you're afraid to use your speaking voice that you think at some point someone may, 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 may realize who it is, you don't have to. Alumni can rate. So it's not just grad students who are currently in the lab, but alumni can also rate and have ra- rated. Rotation students can also rate as well. Undergrads can rate. Basically, anyone who interacts with the PI. Is there, is there a way for individuals to kind of indicate within their rating what the nature of their relationship was with the PI? So, uh, you know, I was a rotation student with the PI for a couple months versus hey, I'm an alumni, I actually spent five years. I'm in my ninth year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spent five years with this PI. As I'm a user who's sort of weighing the, the value of the ratings for myself, seems like that would be useful information to know. Um, you know, is this somebody who interacted with them briefly or really on a long-term basis? So we can tell on the back end because we actually collect that information, but we do not put that on the site. So the short answer is no. There is no way for anyone to know whether whether it came from an alumni, a rotation student, or undergrad. But on the back end, we're collecting it so that in future revisions of the site, we can say that this PI perhaps is really good with postdocs, but terrible with undergrads or something to that effect. There are two other aspects of it that are, are necessary in order to make this a reality. And I've alluded to it, but I want to explicitly state it. And that's the fact that login is required in order to see these, re- to see these readings. And that allows us, whereas um, if you think of, for instance, Rate My Professor, you don't have to log in to Rate My Professor. You can rate any professor you want. But by logging in, this allows us to ensure that the people who are rating professors actually have some sort of interaction with that that professor. And the way we do this is we cross-check the academic emails to make sure that they match. Mm -hmm. If you note if you no longer have the academic email for the institution that you were in with this this professor, then you can send us a, a, a request, uh, and you and we can give you a pass. We will review your request based on the the information you send, which is what research I did with this PI, um, when this was, and then we will we can individually and manually allow you to rate a particular PI. Um, and then finally, another feature of the site which allows privacy and anonymity is editable comments. If you add comments on the site, you can you can delete them, you can edit them whenever for as long as as you you, you are are in the site. And even if you di- if you became if you decided you want to unsubscribe from being a member, it is seamless in to in order to get back in and, and do that. And so these these are some of the features that we have to help um, privacy, anonymity and also ensure quality on the site. I think that's great. And what's interesting to me is who this is for. This it really is for the students, the postdocs, the undergrads in the lab. Your your aim here isn't it doesn't sound like your aim is to uh give feedback to the PI to say, "Hey, you need to 
do better on this autonomy thing. It's really to yeah. help prevent the catastrophic yeah. relationships, the destructive relationships that, that are so common in science. They really are. Absolutely. Um, I've actually had PIs approach me about allowing the comments to be, be seen. And I've told them I can't really do that. I, I've, I've had multiple PIs ask me about this. But what we are looking to do, we do think that giving them feedback is important in some form or another. Um, and so we are currently in the process of, we actually have a system in place whereby if a PI was to sign up on the site and they're already, was to try and sign up on the site and they're already on the site, what we would do is we would give them an, a conglomerate, an overall rating, their overall rating, and saying, we understand that you were trying to sign up on the site, but we, we cannot allow you on the site um, at this time. But here is some feedback um, on what you're doing. This, and this is just an overall rating. We are thinking about other methods in which we can perhaps bridge the gap between PIs and grad students. But as you as I've already noted, the most important aspect of this site, the most important tar the target audience of this site is the grad student, the undergrads, the, the postdocs, the people who work with PIs. We, my main goal is to protect them and to ensure that to increase the probability of success through, through their research. I have a feature request. You ready for this? So sure, go ahead. You have all the, the academic emails for the PIs. So yeah, whenever, they, whenever they get really negative reviews, I just want you to email them three poop emojis. That's the request. <laughs> 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 they won't know why it's coming to their inbox, what it means, but they'll know. <laughs> so what would you say, you know, just off the top of your head, from the reviews that are in there now, what portion would you say are, are negative versus versus positive yeah, who's motivated to review you know it's sort of like when you go on amazon and you look at reviews of a coffee maker you know most of us don't really if our coffee maker's fine we don't take the time to go in and review but if we're upset because something didn't work out well we may feel more motivated to go in there and and paula, I know paula you says she does positive yeah, reviews yeah, you did uh, but sort of from a site-wide perspective what you're would always you going to have the two extremes right the very positive ones and the very negative ones it's always the people in the middle that are kind of like, meh. Yeah. There's never three, <laughs> never three star reviews, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I myself have rated maybe about 11 or 12 PI, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, not only at Yale, but like from previous uh, research programs that I've been in. And I will say based on my rating, I would say that most of them are positive. And of course, there, there has to be at least one negative, and you you guys know who who that is generally. <laughs> but um, generally, I I try to be as measured in my my rating as possible. So even with the negatives, there are also there are always some aspect or some degree of positive you can. When you see someone who has a zero 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 rating, that that's you that's five zeros. That's probably that's probably someone who really got that's a grad student or some researcher who got shafted. And they're they're probably not not being totally objective for the most part. Uh, I I think that the ratings should allow people to pick out which aspects they're more concerned about, and and the overall rating may not be as essential to everyone as one would think. Yeah, and you know I like I, th I like what you're alluding to there. That sure, are there some some just completely bad PIs and bad advisors. Sure, there are a few, but but the majority are somewhere in the middle. And, and an advisor that might be a really bad grad PI for one student might actually be a fine PI for a different student. Exactly, exactly, precisely. Yeah. So, so have you? You mentioned you've gotten some requests and feedback from faculty. What kind of reception and feedback have you gotten from grad students? So grad students love it. I literally have only had one grad student who who uh, was was a little bit concerned because he thought that I was allowing or creating a platform for to badmouth PIs. And I I took the guy out to lunch. I explained to him the situation, and later on he was rating PIs. So it turns it, out it, it was it, actually a PI who put on a <laughs> student's costume. <laughs> But I mean, the, I think the grad, there are PIs, I think for the most part, the PIs are split. So there are PIs who are excellent mentors who, who think that the site is a good idea. 
But even those PIs generally would like a little bit more information uh, about like how they're doing or how PIs are doing in general because they think that the feedback could be helpful. Um, so, and then you have the, the, the other PIs who are just like opposed to the entire idea, like this guy, why, what is he doing this for? Like, I, so yeah. And I think there's value here as you build data, as you understand the trends, as you see how over years, certain PIs are getting certain ratings. Um, I think there's value to not just that PI, as you aggregate the data and tell them a little bit about how they're mentor mentees was i don't know what the other side of a mentor relationship is how they how they view it but but also to a department like are there departments that are toxic that are that are obtaining a group of pis that all have these negative characteristics are there whole universities that you should just kind of avoid so you are actually uh you're actually predicting one of the features that we have coming out. So since you've already talked about it, I'll tell you this feature that we have coming out soon is gonna be program rate. So um the program rate will allow us once we've gotten sufficient uh data on different PIs within different programs, we can then start to uh rate programs based on the PIs that are in them. And we have a whole different set of metrics. It's not it's not the smart metric for that. But um that that should be coming out over the next year, year and a half. Well th- this is really exciting. And it sounds like the request from you is for every grad student, postdoc, rotation student, undergrad, first of all, go find out. <laughs> go go be curious and find out how the PI is rated. And if they don't have yeah. a rating, put one in. Absolutely. Sort of one last thing, shifting gears. So you've mentioned a lot of really cool features and and a lot of things the site already does. This seems like a lot of work. And I know all of you involved are graduate students. How do you find the time to to do all this? So uh, what I did is I, at first I started um, programming it myself, but I eventually contracted it out. Uh, I found uh, some uh, some developers off of Upwork, and they did a lot of the programming that you see, a lot of the designs that that is that are currently on the site now. I'm actually looking at taking this to the next level because I've been contacted by a few companies that want to have a dedicated team onto this. Once I think I see at some point having that ability in order to put more time, effort, and money into it, but at this point. The site is navigable, workable, and for the most part, most of the key features are are there. And what we really, really need uh, are the ratings. I I, th- I feel that it's it's easy for someone to go on and become a user and then just like not do anything or to just like check it out and and then leave. What we really um, I'm asking for are our ratings because that's how it's going to be helpful to the next generation of grad students. And, so, and some of the the younger grad students coming up, such as Paolo. That's my that's my call to action, I guess. <laughs> well, and and you know, hopefully, as as you know, our audience is primarily your target audience. So I think a lot of people are going to learn about Grad PI through through everything that you all have talked about today, and hopefully, you'll you'll get some lots of new ratings. Okay. All right. Yes, we hope so. Is there a feature on the site to uh, rate your favorite grad school related podcast? <laughs> coming soon <laughs> new they feature put, they, well what they can do is they can put it in the comments <laughs> there you go Paul we're counting on you put it in the comments <laughs> yeah. I believe that's called Apple Podcast that's the place to go <laughs> well is, is, there, is there anything left you want to say or anywhere we can our listeners can find either of you or anything else you wanted to plug I mean they can reach us through Grab PI. we have some social media some shout outs would be nice um, or reach us to our institutional emails if you have more questions or need extra mentors outside of lab. We're happy to help. What are your What are your Twitter handles and Facebook pages and things like that so people can find you? I do not have a Twitter handle. Does Grad PI? What, <laughs> Grad PI oh, does. Twitter does. Grad PI yeah. has a Twitter handle. Um, at so Grad PI, I hope. Yeah, it's just at Grad PI <laughs> underscore app. That's our Twitter handle. We also have a Facebook page, uh, which should be if you type in Grad PI on Facebook, you should be able to find it. Uh, we, we are considering doing an Instagram. I was told that I should probably have an Instagram, but uh, <laughs> we currently don't have that. Um, if you want to send specific Grad PI related emails, the simplest way to reach us is admin at gradpi.com. So that's A-D-M-I-N at gradpi.com. 
yeah, feel free to share with other people in your lives and in your lives that have experienced different mentorship styles to write their PIs. That would be greatly appreciated and share the Facebook page so we can grab more fellow researchers to contribute. And that sounds great. We uh, just followed you on Twitter. Nice work. Awesome. <laughs> nice work. Well, well, thank you all for taking the time to talk to us. This is really, really fascinating. And, and obviously, I think with the enthusiasm you're hearing from trainees, this is something that is really desired and needed in the community and is going to help make some changes for good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you learn things, as you compile these statistics, we'd love to hear more about what you learn. Sure, absolutely. We will remain in contact. All right, we'll we'll come back again sometime. Thank you, Gadarth and Paula. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Dan. I think it is always great to see grad students themselves identifying a need and and just going out there and doing something about it. Nobody else could do it, Josh. I mean, the reality is to understand the nature and importance of that PI relationship, you have to have gone through it, and so. There's not going to be some tech company that decides, oh, this is a really important thing to do. You have to have either suffered through it or benefited from it to know how important it is. And I think that's what what they're doing. So I'm excited to see it grow. I hope everybody goes to gradpi.com, at least logs in, checks out the reviews that are there. And hopefully you get into a lab, into a relationship, a mentor relationship that works for you. And if it does leave a review. If it doesn't, leave a review and help the next person that comes along. Yeah, and I love what they said. This is not at all about bashing PIs, but this is about sharing information and making sure trainees have as much information as possible before making what's probably the most important decision they will make with regard to their graduate training. Yeah, I hope that everybody who leaves reviews can be dispassionate, that can be scientific, uh, can be objective, because those are some of the things we pride ourselves on as scientists. It, it could take a, a negative turn if you're in a bad headspace and you had a really bad... I would write a different review now, 10 years on, than I would have the day that I was in the lab. So uh, I can see that evolving over time. It sounds like you can evolve your commentary over time. But yeah, try to try to step outside of yourself and look through. And I think that's where the value of this SMART ratings go. Um, you can always find something that probably needs to be improved and something that's great. I think most individuals, most trainees who are using this site, you know, you can kind of tell as a, as a user of, of any sort of any site with, with ratings, you know, I've mentioned my rice cooker, Dan, before the, uh, before the interview, the one I ended up choosing lots of great reviews, but there certainly were a few of those one star reviews this is the worst rice cooker. It nearly burnt my house. But it was clear that it was just somebody who was pretty, uh, it was not an objective review. And you can usually sniff those out pretty easily. Yeah, the ones that complain that it arrived one day late or something. It's like, well, this has nothing to do with how the rice cooker works. Stop talking about it. This is the fifth horrible rice cooker one in star. a row. <laughs> Wouldn't buy two more times. The, the common factor in you and all your failed relationships is you. It's you. <laughs> All right, Josh. Well, on that note, if anybody else has a question or a topic idea, we'd love to hear it. You can email us podcast at hellophd.com. You can send us a tweet at hellophd or leave a message on the Facebook page. If you like the show, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's a great way to give us some feedback and help other listeners find the show. You can also become a patron. Support us by clicking the become a patron button or visit patreon.com slash hellophd. We would appreciate the jalapeno spicy beer money. And special thanks to the ongoing support of all of our patrons. Absolutely. Well, Josh, we will hopefully have summer calm down a little bit, and we will be back again in a couple of weeks. That sounds great. We will see everyone then. 